this is Valerie from Valerie's Photo Channel. In this tutorial, I'll show you the top four new features in the June 2022 update for Lightroom Classic. The biggest and most important changes are with presets and masks. First off, there are lots of preset updates. At long last, you can now adjust the intensity of presets. For a very long time, users have wanted a way to soften the look of presets, uh, to reduce the opacity, so to speak. And now you can not only reduce the effect, you can also amp it up and make it more intense. So let's look here in the preset panel on the left. First off, there are tons of new presets that have been added. And so when you select a preset, let's just select this futuristic one for fun. And notice that above the preset list, there is now an amount slider. So it is default at 100 but you can slide it either left to reduce the effect and watch the sliders over on the right and you'll see them change. You can see those went down and then you can also amp it all the way up to 200 if you wish. And then to reset it, just double click on the amount slider and it will reset it at 100. One thing that you might want to be aware of is the intensity slider will be available with just about all presets, but not every one of them. It will be there for presets with scalable settings such as these. It, I don't believe it will work for things like um, if you're using uh, lens correction, for example, or upright. Also, another thing you might want to know is that it's best that you adjust the preset amount slider early on because depending on how the preset was created, if you, mark, if you start making changes over on the right, let's see, let's try changing the whites. And look, you'll see that the amount slider over here has grayed out, so now I can't make any changes. It's really situational and depending on that exact preset. Sometimes you can go ahead and move sliders here and everything's fine. Other times they'll be grayed out. So it's just something to be aware of just so you know about it and don't think that there is something wrong and why, why doesn't it work? While we're talking about presets, that leads me to the second new addition, adaptive presets that use Lightroom AI. When you use one of these presets for the sky or your subject, AI will automatically select the sky or your subject or object and apply the preset to just that selected area. So let's try it with our subject here. I'm going to click on adaptive subject and you can see from the drop down that you've got six different options. I'm going to collect, select warm pop and you'll see that Lightroom is the AI is detecting the subject and you'll see a message that it's applying and trying to update the mask. And now if we go over here to our masks, you'll see that a mask has been created. And again, you could go ahead and use the slider here, the amount slider to adjust the intensity. Now, can you apply two of these adaptive presets to the same photo? Sure, let's take a look at that. In this image, why don't we start by using the adaptive subject and select glow and now we've added we've selected our subject and we've added the glow mask over here now let's go ahead and do adaptive sky and why don't we try sunset and there now we have a sunset mask perfectly masked here so you can see how handy this is and how quickly you can mask and use presets. So I think that's a really nice addition. Another great new addition is automatic AI masks. One thing users have been asking for was a way to invert an entire mask. Before, you had to invert each submask individually, and sometimes you didn't get very good results. So in this image, I'll select the sky and mask the sky. And now I want to add to my selection with this area here. So I'm going to click on add and select a brush. Then I'll brush in this area in the midsection so that it will all become part of the same overall mask. So I'll have a sky mask and then I'll have the brush mask and they'll be like sub parts of this, this mask here. 
So in the past, I would have had to select the brush mask, click on the three dots, and click on invert. And then I'd have to select the sky, and then click on invert. And that doesn't really help me, does it? So I'm going to hit Control Z and Control Z again to get back to my original selection. So now all you need to do is go to your main mask level. So these are your sub masks. This is your main mask level. Click on the three dots and then you can either choose invert mask or duplicate an invert mask. So you would want to choose duplicate an invert mask if you are making adjustments up here first and then you wanted to make different adjustments down here. So you don't want one to affect the other. So I'm just going to go click on invert mask to show you how quick and easy now it is to have your mask inverted. And it would be the same way if you duplicate and invert. You would just have two separate masks, which I can quickly show you. So I'll just hit Control Z. And here again, I'll click on the three dots and I'm going to click on Duplicate and Invert Mask. So then now I still ha I have my inverted mask, which is down here, and then I still have my original mask, which is up here. So as you can see, inverting masks used to be very frustrating, and this should make it a heck of a lot easier. Another new feature is the ability to apply AI masks to multiple images. This new AI mask feature is pretty amazing. In the past, while you could copy settings from one image to another using the previous button or the copy and paste option, it would put the masks in the same exact spot as the previous image. So in other words, it copied over the mask, but it didn't recalibrate the AI mask, and thus the lo location would be off. So now the AI can find the sky in the new image and put it in the right place. So let's look at this image here. And I'm going to go to Select Sky. So it's detected the sky. And now I'm going to make a few adjustments. Let's say, let's move the tint, make it pinker. And let's add a wee bit of clarity. And maybe I'm going to adjust the noise. Then I want to copy this mask to my next image. So I can hit the copy. And you'll see this menu come up or this screen come up. And you want to click on masking and select your mask. And then hit the copy button. And then I'm going to move to my next image and just click on Paste. And you can see that the settings are pasted and there we got a mask in exactly the right area. And you obviously you can see how different this image, this sky, was from this. So that's pretty darn amazing. And we can even do it with this next image. I'll just go ahead and click on Paste. And there we go. So that was a real time saver. It really adds to the power of AI masks. In addition to the presets and the mask updates, Adobe has added a number of other new features, including a proper red eye removal tool. You can either manually remove red eye or use Lightroom's AI to automatically detect all the eyes in an image and fix it with just one click. And there are a number of other features, including new camera support, a new crop overlay, better preview management, and other features that I'll list all in the description. So I hope that you have found this tutorial helpful. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to get alerted to my new tutorials. Bye for now, and thanks for watching.